Hey guys, happy Wednesday, I believe it is. Um, I'm recording this and then gonna post it to the U to YouTube, my YouTube channel. Um, we are gonna finish Out of My Mind. I should have finished it last summer. I know, that's horrible. Um, but we are gonna finish and all you have to do is just go back and um, watch the other videos and you will see two at a time. I think the very first time I did it, I coupled it with some younger grades books. So it's on the tail end of a video, but all the rest I believe are um, sectioned off in ch two chapters at a time that you can just go back and, and reread and get caught up. But um, just to take you back, we're learning about Melody. This is a story written by Melody about her life and she is handicapped she does have disabilities she cannot speak and started the first portion of her life people thinking that she was not smart and judging um, a book by its cover and not what's on the inside and so she um, for christmas got a new device um, that is called a Meditalker, and remember, if you remember back, she named it Elvira, I believe, and it's a combination computer, music player, and speech device, and so where we ended, she was, um, finishing up a test, I believe a hundred questions, and trying to make an academia team, and nobody thinks she can do it, and the other girls are worried that she's cheating somehow, and all that, so, um, she, her mom just came and picked her up and it had been a long afternoon of her taking the test. So, out of my mind, chapter 21, here we go. We'll read 21 and 22 today, I believe. Going to the bathroom at school just plain sucks. I have to be taken out of my chair, lifted onto the toilet, and held there so I don't fall. Then someone has to wipe me when I'm finished. It's not so bad when it's mom but it's awful when it's a classroom aide has to do it for me. She is required by law to wear plastic gloves, I guess in case I have some kind of infection or disease. It's completely embarrassing. I don't usually have to go first thing in the morning, but I'm nervous on Tuesday. I ask to be taken twice. Then I go to all my inclusion classes. The students who tried out for the quiz team can't stop ch chatting about the test. I listen to every word. I couldn't believe how easy it was, Connor boasts. I bet I got a higher score than you did, Claire says, her voice cocky. I thought the geography questions were off the map, Rose adds. I never even heard of some of those countries. Jessica shakes her head. The math part wasn't much fun either. I can't believe we even care about a dumb test for a quiz team, Rodney comments. Because the competition is on television, man, Connor replies. Big time TV coverage here in town. And if we make the finals, we go to DC where it'll be televised all over the country. If we win, we get to be on Good Morning America. My grandma in Philly can watch me and my auntie in Frisco. I'll be famous. What do you mean if we win, Connor? Claire's asks. Don't you mean when we stomp the competition? Yeah, for sure. I already bought a new suit for when I'm on TV. Rose rolls her eyes. I thought this was a team contest, Connor, she reminds him. Hey, the team would be nothing without me. He holds his hand up in the air for high fives. I listen quietly from the back of the room. When the bell rings to indicate that it's time for Mr. Deming's class, my palms feel sweaty. Catherine pushes me into the room and whispers into my ear, relax, you rock. Mr. Deming gets the class quiet and takes attendance. Why do teachers go slowly when you want something from them? Finally, he removes a sheet of paper from his briefcase. I graded your quiz team test last night, and since many of those who tried out for the competition team are in this class, I'm gonna share the results with you now. The teachers of the other classes who have students who tried out have been given the same list and are at this moment reading the results to them. So read the list, Connor shouts, getting up from his desk. If classroom behavior were a determining factor for making the team, Connor, you might be in trouble, Mr. Deming says. Please quiet down for a moment. That shuts him up, and he sits down heavily. First of all, I'm very proud of all of you who took the test. It was quite challenging, and you all did extremely well. Rose raises her hand. Yes, Rose. Can we see the questions and answers later so we know where we messed up? Absolutely. 
As a matter of fact, we'll use this test as a learning tool to study for the real competition. But anyone is free to see the test and check their responses. Please read the names, Connor says as politely as I've ever heard him. Mr. Deming smiles. Okay, will do. I shall read the alternates first. Two fifth graders, two from sixth grade, Amanda Firestone, Molly North, Elena Rodriguez, Rodney Masul. My heart falls to my shoes, which is not quite to the floor, but close. How could have I missed so many questions? Maybe my thumb slipped and I pushed the wrong letters? Catherine squeezes my hand. Molly and Rodney screech with joy. Amanda and Elena are sixth graders. Connor is noticeably quiet. And now, Mr. Deming continues, the names of the four students who scored the highest and will represent our school at the local competition downtown. The alternates will accompany them and will be called upon if any of the team members are unable to participate in any way. Are we ready? Ready, Connor says softly. I notice he has his fingers crossed behind his back. I'm proud to report that all four are from our classroom, he pauses. To know all the finalists are from fifth grade blows me away. Way to go. We torched grade six? Awesome, Rodney says. Now read the names before Connor wets his pants. Connor reaches over and smacks Rodney on the back of his head. Mr. Deming takes a deep breath. The top four scores and members of our quiz team will be Connor Bates. Connor interrupts him with a wild whooping cheer, of course. And if I may continue, Mr. D says over his glasses, we are also pleased to welcome Claire Wilson and Rose Spencer. Claire's, smiling, Claire's smile is smug. But that's only three, Connor says, looking around in confusion. I can count, Connor, Mr. Deming replies dryly. So who's the last person on the team, Molly asks. Earthquake report, TV weather guys, feels some strange activity coming from a local school. Could it be a girl's heartbeat pounding too hard? Mr. Deming clears his throat. I must apologize. I think we have all under underestimated a member of our class. Earthquake report. This is the big one. He continues. In my 15 years of running this competition, I have never had a student make a perfect score on the practice test. It is designed to be challenging, to weed out the weaker candidates. In a word, it's hard. Tell me about it, Connor mumbles. When Melody Brooks took that little practice quiz with us last week, I thought it was a lucky accident that she did so well. But yesterday, Melody blew us all away. She got every single question right. He pauses, making sure everyone is taking this in. And then he says, all of them. Earthquake report. Walls are tumbling everywhere. So she's on the team, Rose asks, disbelief in her voice. Yes, she's on the team. But, but, we'll look weird, Claire counters. Everybody will stare at us. I'm not going to have any of that kind of talk. Do you understand, Mr. D says sternly. I'm very proud of Melody. I regret I underestimated her, and I'm glad to have her on our team. Earthquake report, call the paramedics. A girl in fifth grade is about to explode. Everybody in the class turns to look at me. Catherine gives me a hug. Rose flashes me a smile. And I try not to kick and drip and make my classmates sorry that I'll be on the team with them. Will the whiz kids folks be cool with Melody? Molly asks. Mr. Deming looks thoughtful. I'll contact the quiz team officials and let them know about our special circumstances, he says. But that's no concern of yours. Now listen up. Team members will meet every day after school for two hours for the next two weeks, right up until the first competition. Practice sessions are mandatory. Here's the paperwork for your parents to read and sign. I need it back tomorrow. Earthquake report, expect big aftershocks. Nothing like this has ever been seen before. The more I think about it, the more excited I get. Television, pressure, people looking at me. I can feel myself getting tense and tight. My arms and legs start doing the tornado spastic dance. My head jerks. I try not to, but I screech a little. Just a little. Everybody turns at the sound. I can see Molly and Claire jerking their hands, kicking their legs, and making crazy noises. A few people giggle. Mr. Deming's face grows tight. I aim all my energy at my thumb and point to go. Catherine gets the message and hurries me out of there. I want to find a hole and hide in it. Chapter 22. 
The next two weeks pass in a whirlwind. In spite of my little display of weirdness that Tuesday in class, I showed up at practice on Wednesday afternoon as if nothing had happened. Maybe nothing had. I was just being me. I'm not sure what the others thought. They said nothing about it. So like all the other team members, alternates and regulars alike, I stayed every day after school to practice from 3.30 to almost 6. I still couldn't get over the fact I was part of the team. Okay, truth, there was the team and there was me. And we were in the same room, but we weren't quite a team. They appreciated the fact I usually got the answers right, but... When Mr. Deming gave us multiple choice questions to answer, I had to think for only a moment, then hit the correct letter on my machine. But lots of other preparation involved fast and furious, back and forth discussions, and I had trouble adding anything to what was being said, most of the time. One of the longest one-syllable words in the English language is screeched, Connor announced one afternoon as he chomped on a raspberry twizzler. That's a good word for melody, Claire said as she snatched his candy and took a bite. I couldn't respond, and nobody else bothered to. What do you call that dot that goes over the letter I, Elena asked the group. I knew the answer, but it took me too long to spell out the word. It's called a tittle, Amanda answered quickly, like the brain of a fifth grader. Ooh, snap, said Rodney. I had planned to type snap when she said that too, but I was too slow. The group had already zoomed on to another question. Gee, they talked fast. Who was the first child born in the American colonies? Rose asked, reading from a huge stack of three by five cards in her hand. Virginia Dare, Elena answered. Okay, my turn. She flipped through her own cards, color coded. Who was the first Miss America? That's dumb, Connor said. They're not gonna ask stupid girl stuff like that. You don't know the answer? Claire asked him. Of course I know, Connor replied with a snort. Margaret Gorman, in 1921. She was 16 and probably looked better than you. He and Rodney were the only ones to laugh. Rodney jumped in then. I've got a nasty question. What is pediculosis? Without missing a beat, Rose answered, when you've got a scalp full of head lice, you. Do you know that from personal experience? Of course not. I was just looking for a hard word, Rodney told her. He and Connor didn't laugh that time. You want a hard word? I've got one, Amanda told the group. What is Hexadactylism. That seemed to stump all of them for a minute. So I had time to tap on the number six, followed by the word fingers. Then I pushed play so they could all hear my answer. Good job, Melody, Elena stuff. Elena said. How does she know all this stuff? Claire whispered to Rose. She's smart, Rose said, flipping through more cards. But she'll look odd on TV, don't you think? Claire continued, as if I couldn't hear her. I was ready for her. I had typed a couple of things the night before, so all I had to do was push a button. TV makes a lot of people look funny, I had the machine say. Maybe even you, Claire. Ooh, look who's got snaps now, Connor hooted. Good one, Melody. If I could have danced, I would have. But as quickly as that moment happened, it disappeared. The team zipped on the rocket pace speed, feeding off one another's knowledge and skill. At the rate they were going, there was no way I could jump in quick enough. I listened, however, and remembered it all. What's the only rock that floats? Pumice. Could be spelled pumice. How many chromosomes does a human have? 46. What was the first state to allow women to vote? Wyoming. What's Mr. Deming's first name? Wallace. We all cracked up at that. At the end of every prep session, Mr. Deming gave us another official quiz from National Headquarters. Since those always consisted of multiple choice questions, I always did well, but I wanted to be like the rest of them as we studied. One Thursday, in the middle of a practice session, Rose's mom ordered pizza for everyone and had it delivered to the school. Your mom rocks, Connor said. You're easy to please, Connor, Rose replied with a laugh. Everybody rushed to get the hot, spicy smelling slices from the box. I was starving like the rest of them, but I just sat there. Don't you want some pizza? Elena asked me. I'll go get a slice for you. She never said much during the practices, but she took lots of notes and she usually scored pretty high on our practice quizzes. Not hungry. How can I explain to her that without Catherine or my mom or Mrs. V, I wasn't able to eat? I had to be fed like a baby and I made a mess even then. When my mom came to pick me up, she asked me if I wanted to stop by Pizza Hut on the way home. I just shook my head. 
So that is the end of chapter 22. Uh, yeah, so we will do 23 the next time, 23 and 24. We're nearing the end. We'll see how she does at the contest. I hope y'all have been able to get outside today. It's beautiful. I think it's supposed to get chilly tomorrow maybe. So take advantage. Um, enjoy the weather while you can. Keep practicing social distancing. Be safe. Wash your hands. And I miss all of you guys and hope to see you soon. See you later.